Five years ago, prostate cancer patients risked fatal blood loss, incontinence, Money, impotence, no, and going under the knife on prostate already. Now they face just a teaspoonful of blood loss and so little pain they don't even need a paracetamol after they are. A NASA made robot known as the Olivis, the Vinci S, can now delve inside a man's body to perform keyhole surgery. Joining me on the line now is Peter Camden Woodley from Weybridge, who's had the operation. Hello, Peter. Hiya. Hi, can you sit down now? Uh, yeah, I'm fine, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. Fantastic. I'll come to you in a moment. But uh, your surgeon also joins us now from the Royal Marsden Hospital. Hello, Chris Ogden. Oh, good afternoon. What sort of a patient was he? Uh, well, he was uh, very routine, actually. Uh, he was uh, not particularly nervous beforehand and uh, behaved very well throughout. And I think he went home the day afterwards. And how are you now, uh, 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 Peter? Well, I'm absolutely fine. I, I couldn't believe how little pain there was. And the, and the wounds are almost invisible already. It's taken me three weeks. I mean, at, at one time, it's, I mean, it, uh, Chris, it sounded like it was a sort of torture scene from a Shakespearean play, having your prostate sorted. Well, I mean, open surgery has its risks, which uh, are much uh, mitigated by this new technology, in that the blood loss is much less, there's no large incision, so the trauma to the patient is much less, and the recovery is quite dramatic usually, both the 24-hour hospital stay as opposed to nearly a week, which is what patients face um, in the past. And without using your hands, because this is radio, Chris, can you describe this incredible piece of equipment and what, how you have to operate it? Well, uh, it's somewhat surreal in the sense that the keyhole uh, instruments are put inside the abdomen and then the surgeon, myself, actually sits remotely from the patient inside a console, which is a bit like one of those uh, video games where you have binocular vision, which is 3D, and foot pedals and uh, special gantry system, which mimics my hand movements. Um, in fact, you can perform the procedure uh, between, uh, they've already done this, between New, New York and Paris, so you don't actually have to be in the same theatre, uh, but we but we do routinely uh, operate in the same theatre. Yes, I, th I think remote control surgery, I think that's, for some people might be a step too far, because you, you only need the line to go down or somebody to put a, put a, forget to put a shilling in the meter. Well, exactly. <laughs> you have to have a very sure uh, internet connection. Chris, uh, when they described what was going to be happening, sorry, uh, Peter again, uh, yeah, when, they, yeah. when they said what was going to happen to you, what was your first reaction? Um, well, I knew very little about it, so I got on the internet and I had a, had a look, there's quite a lot out there about it. Um, I, was, I was quite impressed with it. And, and when the operation was uh, being carried out, was it, were you, uh, was it local anaesthetic or general or what? No, I was, I was completely out. <laughs> Best way, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, w wake you up when the pudding arrives. Exactly, that's exactly what I had. I know it's pretty when I woke up. <laughs> <laughs> they treat you like kids when you're in hospital, don't they? Yeah. Now, you found out about your prostate problem. Uh, uh, um, you needed to be sorted immediately, didn't you? Yeah, apparently I did, yeah. Yeah. And had you any idea symptoms of what was wrong with you at the time? Well, that's the defining part. There was absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. And I, I went to have a, a medical. And the, the, the doctor said to me, what's the matter with you? I said, well, I don't think there is anything the matter with me, but you know, I'd like to be have a medical. I'm sure there isn't anything wrong with me. And they were a little bit dismissive. So I insisted on having a blood test and everything else. And then uh, they phoned me out a week later saying, sorry, you better come in for some issues to discuss. Oh, so I don't like the word issues, do you? So it just goes to show that, you know, anybody out there in their 30s or 40s, because it's not an old man's disease now, no. get tested. Just yeah. don't, don't be put up by a receptionist or dismissive doctors. Just get down there, get tested. You're entitled to have it. You pay enough tax, you pay enough national insurance. Mm. Go get it done. Bit of a blood test, finger up the bum, and uh, you're on your way. Yay or nay? Just, just a blood test. You don't have a finger at the bum. If your blood test is fine. Okay. Just blood test will tell you within a week. Yeah. Uh, Chris, this is the right message you want to hear out here, isn't it? But is it amazing? A guy goes along. I sometimes think us patients have a sixth sense about our own bodies, don't we? Well, I think that's right. I think you, uh, most doctors do listen to patients' um, uh, instincts, and uh, I think that's a, it's a good guide. Uh, but uh, certainly if you've 
have a family history of the disease, and in fact, if there's any family history of breast cancer, uh, there's an increased incidence of prostate cancer in men, um, then you should start, certainly consider having your testing in your 40s. Um, uh, 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 and, and do it regularly, even if you get a result, what, every two years? or uh, Yearly is probably. Yearly, yearly. okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right then. Uh, I guess who I'm phoning this afternoon, I think it's just over a year. <laughs> right, and um, oh, I've just been asked, do you actually cut out, them? do you cut it out these days? Well, you, you alluded to that earlier, it's not actually cutting, is it? Well, it is, it is a surgical removal of the prostate, but the key is to remove the whole gland, but leaving all the delicate nerves and muscles that surround it intact, which allows for the early recovery and the recovery of uh, normal voiding function and hopefully sexual function. I don't know if you ever caught a Raquel Welch film back in the uh, 60s or 70s called Fantastic Voyage. Did you catch that one? No, I'm sorry, I missed that. Well, what they did was they shrank all the surgeons down till they were so minute they could insert the surgeons on a little device into the arteries and they travelled into the heart. I recommend it to you, but you did the opposite. You blow up this sort of screen, don't you? And you well, stay the right. same size. But you have the feeling that you are inside the yes. patient. Well, and when I was reading the description about it, I thought, this is fantastic void and it's now science fact. Well, exactly. We've done over 500 now. And you're passing it on, aren't you? Training up other people as well. At the yeah. and, and I think that there will be many more machines around the country over the years. But it's amazing, isn't it? As you said, nowadays it's almost a day at the office, isn't it? A keyhole surgery. I mean, I didn't realise uh, until somebody's telling me, they said, well, to me, I'd had keyhole surgery. I said, well, I had a couple of stents put in. They said, that's keyhole surgery. That's right. And I thought, so I said, whoa, I'm at the cutting age. Well, no longer cutting anymore. No. Exactly. Peter, you back, Peter, are you back in operation as, as a restorer? I am. Yeah, I, and, and, and that, I came back home on the Wednesday, on the Thursday, I started work. Well, oh, you can't I, even take two weeks sick leave. Well, don't tell Chris, though, because... <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, but, well, what do you say, Chris? Give it a couple of weeks. Well, I think it, it depends on the individual yeah. and uh, how quickly their body responds and how motivated they are to get back to Well, work. when I had my first couple of stents put in, I'm going to tell you, three days later, I was on stage in America. Because I reckon if you feel you can do it, you can do it. Exactly. Great to talk to you. Peter from Weybridge in Surrey, good to talk to you, mate. Uh, All right. Well done, and thanks for sharing your story, and thanks for your advice, because you may have encouraged some male listening at the moment, or his missus or partner, to say, book yourself in at the doctor. Well, I, I hope so, yes. I really hope so. And Chris Ogden, regards to everybody at the Royal Marsden Hospital. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us on BBC.